Hello. Hello, Jen. Welcome to the meeting. Thank you. Oh, Good brand time new time member time. alert. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello, Kylie. Hey, Kylie. Kylie. Name. Thank you. It's nice to meet you all. And you as well. Hello, Bianca. Ava, mm -hmm. I just tell you, your boss surprised me. <laughs> My boss? Oh, uh -oh. because he let it get through? Uh, with no pushback at all. Like, uh, is this being recorded? Can you just be careful? But yes. <laughs> yeah, like, I just was like, whoa, uh, conversation. He, he surprised me as well, but I guess I haven't had an award in like two quarters, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was impressed. Hey, Kylie, is this your first time coming to a meeting? It is. It is my first time. <laughs> Hi, Kylie. We'll try not to scare you off. I like your <laughs> accent wall. Your Thank you. Wall. Thank you. My father-in-law built that for us. We love it. It's like the highlight of the room. I keep watching them do that on all of the uh, Property Brothers and all these shows like no demo right now and all they do is put like siding just a little bit of siding yeah. and you just glue it on and bam it makes it look so much cooler i feel like i could have attempted it but it probably wouldn't have turned out <laughs> as well i think you need like a laser level and yeah special that because that that that's not like those aren't level right those are kind of at an angle so, no right? they're level it's just the way like level, my computer Oh, I guess yeah, the ceiling yeah. is angled. Oh, that was too. Because mm, it kind of looks like um. Oh, I I totally forgot the word. You know, in art, when you paint the lines like that, perspective. Yeah. Yes. Like a forced perspective where it's yes, going. And, exactly. Yeah. I got you. I I felt that too. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty cool. And then you've got the beam to match. Look at that. I do. You really could fit in one of those property brother shows. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Man, my oh, office is nice and warm. Right my fingers are so cold today. Oh, I always do that. That's even better for your speech. Got to got to warm them up. Hand movements. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, I see you pulling up our agenda already, Michelle. Look at you. I'm on it. Efficient. You're waiting I, for Morton. I was doing the same thing, but an offline copy so I could see where we are. Andy, would you like to start us off with any announcements of the day before we start to talk about our agenda? Uh, no specific announcements right now other than hello, everybody. My name is Candy Bridge, as you can see from the box. I'm the president of the club. And I'm super happy to welcome Kylie as a guest and welcome Jen as a new member. Yay. Very, very excited about that. Thank you both for attending. Happy to have you here today. With that, nothing else for now. I will zip it and see where things go. Thank you very much, Candy. And so, uh, one, we mentioned having a guest. Kylie, would you be open to telling us a little bit about yourself in about a, a minute, as well as who brought you here today? Absolutely. So, my name is Kylie Wynette. Um, and I recently joined Dell, um, I guess I'm coming up on a year, so not so recently anymore, but last year in February. Um, and I am on the uh, consumer small business go to market team. Um, so I manage like smart home networking, um, projectors, all of these fun consumer electronics categories on Dell.com. Um, 
yes, fun fact, we do have like smart home products and everything on Dell.com. Most people don't know that, but um, I joined because I want to um, get better with my presenting skills. Um, I have to say that's an area of weakness. So I'm definitely looking forward to growing with you all. And it's, it's great to meet you. Great to have you here. Thank you, Kylie. And Jen, as our newest member, would you like to give a quick introduction to yourself and what made you join our club? Sure. Um, my name's Jen St. Peter. I'm part of the Customer Solutions Centers uh, based in North America. Um, I'm in Massachusetts, but most of the team is in Round Rock. Um, and I've been with Dell for about three years. And I joined, I joined a session right before the holidays and really enjoyed it. Um, and much like Kylie, I, I want to enhance my presentation and speaking abilities. So uh, that's why I'm here. Welcome. It's great to have you, Jen. Thank you. We love new members and new guests. <laughs> and if you ever get down to Round Rock with your team, there are several of us down here. So let us know. We'd love to connect for a cup of coffee or something. Absolutely. I'm, I'm hoping to get down there at the end of February. We have a couple of big events, so I'm hoping I'll be able to attend those. I'll let you know. Let us know. We will always take you out for lunch or a glass of wine or a glass of wine at lunch, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it helps the flow. <laughs> it does. So at Toastmasters, I think there's a lot of you that are seasoned and recognize the flow of what we do. But for those of you new or just joining for the first time, we have two parts of our meeting. The first part, we have prepared speeches in which individuals usually have about five to seven minutes to give a prepared speech, and then they get an evaluation. During the second part of the meeting, we go through and do what's called table topics, which allows everybody to participate and gives them one to two minutes to do speaking on your feet, which we love new people to participate as well. It's one of those things that as soon as you reluctantly say, I'll go next, that fear kicks in. And you don't know what to say or how to say it or what those expectations are. And you'll be asked a question right then and there that is fairly simple question. We're not trying to challenge your knowledge or anything else. It's just how you present yourself on uh, quick on your feet. So don't be afraid of it. Those little things that happen are the whole reason why we're here, because the more you do it, the more comfortable that you will find yourself speaking to those pieces. Uh, I do want to give uh, some introductions to our roles that we have today. We have a timer and awards, Morton Loader up. We all learned how to say your name correctly. Is, did I do that right? It depends which country you're from. I would like to be from any country. How did you say it? <laughs> There's no such thing as any country. It's Ludrup if you live in the US. If you oh. live in Norway, it's Ludrup. Ludrup. I like that. I want to be from my, my role, Michelle, if I may. Yes, please. So my role is to make sure everyone, hopefully, everyone stays within their time. So for table topics, you have one minute to two minutes and 30 seconds. Evaluations, one minute to 30, one minute, 30 seconds to three minutes and 30 seconds. And speech, four minutes, 30 seconds to seven minutes and 30 seconds. As you get close, you will see my background change. And I'll update my name here in just one second. But you will see the, the backgrounds. If I can bring up the right backgrounds here. You will see a change from the current color to green. That means you've met your time limit. And if you are getting close, 30 seconds out for exceeding your limit, in my background will look like this. And if you are at time, meaning you have now 30 seconds to really finish up, you'll see these red time limits. If you do exceed your time limit, you will not be qualified for an award. And Thank then follow, you. following uh, the speeches, when we do make evaluations, send that to me only, and I'll tally up and give, provide the awards towards the end. Morton, would you mind renaming yourself as well and just put timer and awards so when it comes to that time, it's always easier for people to spot you and make sure that they're sending that to you 
directly and not everybody else. Progress. Thank you. Our next role coming up is our grammarian. Ava, would you like to tell us what you're doing today? Yes. So something that's really important that we do in Toastmasters for our new member and our guest is we want to make sure that we're using the English language appropriately and also that we're being understood in a eloquent manner. Therefore, we have a word of the day. The word of the day today, you should be able to see it on my screen, is exasperate. So what this is, is it's to make it make something more violent, bitter, or severe. For example, I'm just now putting it into the chat so that you can follow along. But it seemed as though every new attempt at a solution served only to exasperate the problem. So make it worse. We don't like it. So try to use this today. You get bonus points, a little gold sticker next to your name if you can use it in a sentence. And so you can see it right here on my screen and it'll stay there throughout the duration of today's meeting. What I will also be doing is taking note of your filler words. Sometimes we like to use words like, um, uh, so, like, you know, <sighs> just to fill that space when we're trying to think and it can get a little distracting. So I'll be making note of perhaps your favorite filler word to use and let you know at the end of the meeting so that you can perhaps more actively try to avoid those. All right, back to you, Michelle. Thank you, Ava. And now for our table topics, Master, I gave you a little bit hint of that. Brian, would you like to tell us what you're doing today as table, tops, a table topics, Master, and a little hint in the types of questions that you will be asking us? Sure, I'll be uh, hosting table topics, which means that you'll get an opportunity to speak for one to two minutes on a prompt that you haven't heard before. I will hint at it by saying that uh, the, these table topics have a very modern technical flair to them, but you'll find out more about that later. Great, thank you very much, Brian. We have one speech today, so we will be having Bianca deliver a speech, and then we are going to take one minute afterwards to provide some evaluation. I would like all of you, make sure that you're utilizing your notes, you're writing this down. We're all here to receive this feedback so that we can learn and grow. Uh, Bianca will be evaluated by Karthik after our table topics, but that's not the only person that should be given, giving her feedback. It should be everyone. So everyone listen for um, things that she's done really well and things that she can work on. And we're going to take a minute after her speech to go and send her that information either in the Zoom chat privately directly to her, or you can send it in Teams chat directly to her. Uh, but it'll be Karthik that gives her formal evaluation today. Uh, with that, I would also recommend you can hover over Bianca's square and click on the, the three dots that come up and you can pin her to your screen because we do want to make sure that we are seeing Bianca uh, up front and center as she gives her presentation. She is delivering her second evaluation and feedback speech as part of her teen collaboration pathway that she's on. The purpose of her project is to practice applying speech evaluation feedback, and it includes two five to seven minute speeches. So she's done one speech, she got feedback, and now today she has to apply that feedback that was provided to her from her first speech so that she can improve the content and her delivery. Today, Bianca will be sharing a simple and versatile recipe that she hopes you'll be very interested in trying. Bianca. You're still muted. You can feel free to move yourself. Okay. Okay. Happy New Year, fellow Toastmasters. Did you all make any New Year's resolutions? Anybody? Yes, some yes, some no, yes. There's something about January, the new year that culture tells us, heck, even our jobs tell us, 
it's time to pause, take some time to think about what went well and things that maybe didn't go so well, and then set goals for how we can improve over the next year. Of course, the most common goals tend to be health and fitness related. So I thought, what better time than now to share one of my favorite healthy recipes? Alas, this recipe won't help you to lose weight or eat more protein, but it will help you to have healthier, more productive disagreements. Some of you are relieved because you thought I was going to talk about bowel movements. No, nope. today I want to talk to you about a recipe called conversational receptiveness. And in case you haven't caught on yet, this is not a food recipe. It's a conversation recipe that researchers at Harvard and the University of British Columbia have discovered that helps us to have healthier disagreements. It is not a complex conflict resolution theory requiring hours or multiple courses of training. It is simply a collection of words and phrases that you can incorporate into your conversations that communicate your willingness to thoughtfully engage with opposing viewpoints. And if you're thinking, no, thanks, I, I would rather talk about bowel movements than willingly engage in conflict, because that's what you're asking me to do. And I completely understand. We've all experienced disagreements that can escalate into conflicts and even personal attacks. And sometimes conflict in one relationship can spill over into other relationships. But the research showed that when you use conversational receptiveness, you can avoid the negative effects of disagreement and unlock some positive, more healthy relational benefits instead. You'll find when you use conversational receptiveness that your partner perceives you more positively as a better advisor, as being more knowledgeable, more intelligent, and a whole host of other positive attributes. Also, your messages are seen as more persuasive and your partner is more likely to seek out your inputs in the future. And when we signal to our partner our willingness to thoughtfully engage with opposing viewpoints, our partner often reciprocates, which means conversational receptiveness is contagious, not contentious. If you're interested in unlocking some of those healthier, more positive benefits of disagreement, and you're ready to give conversational receptiveness a try, here's that recipe. The first ingredient, acknowledge understanding. You want to resist the urge to make your point right away. Your goal is to listen and acknowledge understanding of what this other person is saying and their point of view. You can do this by using phrases like, I hear you, or I see your point, or it sounds like you're saying the current state is not working well for you and your team. The second ingredient, find points of agreement. Here, you do not want to make counter arguments. What you do want to do is find something that you can both agree on. It can be small, it can be broad, but you should be able to find something that you can agree on. And you can use phrases like, I agree, you're right. Or I think something we can both agree on is that team morale is low. The third ingredient, make positive statements. Throughout the course of your conversation, make your best effort to avoid negative statements like, no, wrong, we shouldn't do this, it really couldn't work. Instead, frame your responses using positive statements. You might say something like, yes, right, or we should be able to do this, or could we bring this perhaps to our next team meeting? And then the last ingredient you want to incorporate, avoid overconfident language. These are things like always, 
all, or I'm 100% sure we have this data, or the only way this could work is if. Instead, you want to signal humility by using hedging language, words like somewhat, probably, I think we have that data, it might work. Whether or not you're 100% sure here is not the point. Signaling humility here is the key. And that's it. That's the recipe. Four ingredients. These are simple words and phrases that anyone can begin using today in your next work meeting, when you've hit an impasse, or with your significant other who has very different opinions on how the dishwasher should be loaded. Acknowledge understanding, find points of agreement, make positive statements, hedge to soften claims. So as you're solidifying your goals for the year, I highly encourage you to put this conversational receptive res receptiveness recipe in your rotation and unlock some of the positive and healthy benefits of disagreement. Well done, Bianca. Well done. I always love seeing the, when people use the overlay of putting your own video over the, the, the presentation. Well done. You can stop sharing for the moment. And anybody that did pin uh, Bianca, you can do the same thing, hover over her picture, click on the three dots to remove her pin if you want to see more than just her. We will now, I mentioned in the beginning, we were going to do one minute of feedback to give to Bianca, but since we have only one speaker versus two today, we're going to go ahead and uh, go into breakout rooms for five to seven minutes. So give me just a moment and I will set those up for us. And I guess for the, the new people, these breakout rooms, it's giving us an opportunity to have that small little feedback so that we can talk to each other in the breakout rooms. She will still get her full on formal feedback from Karthik but it gives us all an opportunity to practice sharing what we heard and what we felt. I will open these rooms now and they will, I'll bring you back in uh, approximately seven minutes, six to seven.
no warning. We're just coming back. Right? There's no warning. <laughs> <laughs> just ready to go. I know. I was looking at that. I, I need to check that out again of how, because sometimes it gives that one minute and sometimes it doesn't in those options. I guess there was that checkbox that notify me when the timeout, that when the time is up. Got it. Countdown after closing breakout room. Now we all know. Part of our Zoom training. <laughs> that you gave <laughs> yes i don't know if that that part was was in there i have to go in deeper intermediate zoom usage so now thank you everyone for providing that feedback getting your your thoughts going on that make sure that you are sending those thoughts over to bianca so that she can utilize that for not only her next toastmaster speech but also just in day-to-day -day deliveries that she is giving now we will be going into our table topics brian would you like to take us away we've got until about 12 42. all right thank you michelle over the last few weeks and months, if you've been paying attention to tech news, you've probably been hearing a lot about AI and specifically chat GPT, the chat bot machine learning language model that is uh, a genuine threat to Google, uh, Google search, and it could very well transform coding and writing and teaching and all kinds of things as we adopt it in the future. And so if you're worried about chatbots like that uh, automating away your job, I'm about to exacerbate those fears by uh, showing that we can also automate table topic uh, preparation. Uh, I went ahead and used ChatGPT to generate 10 table topic prompts for today's meeting. Uh, and I'll even share with you the prompt I used in the chat. I told it, please write a set of 10 table topic prompts for a corporate Toastmasters meeting. They should be professional in nature, perhaps about situations you would find at a technology company. And now I will allow you to uh, volunteer to answer these questions. They are not uh, particularly funny or difficult or anything like that. They're pretty straightforward, but that will become more clear as you start hearing them. So who would like to go first? I see Candy raise a hand. All right, Candy, pick a number between one and 10. Seven. All right. How do you manage stress and maintain a healthy work-life balance? Managing stress and maintaining this, I, I struggle to call it a work-life balance, but the balance in all areas of your world is super important. For me, I do have fun tchotchke things on my desk. Deadpool is my spirit animal. I've said that for years. And I have a stress ball. There it is. That I will just beat the tar out of on a day that I really need it. Love my stress ball. But I also make a point to stop literally close my eyes and take a deep breath during the day if I get stressed. I'll walk away for a minute, 30 seconds if I need to, if I get stressed. Keeping the balance is just remembering that both sides of my life are very important. And if one starts to feel overwhelming, I will walk away from that one for a few minutes and engage in the other one for a little while. Knowing that we have the flexibility, certainly I have the flexibility on my team to work whatever time or hours that I need to work to make that happen helps. But I really do strive to keep that good balance. And the other thing I would say is that it's choice. I think you guys heard me do a speech about that not too long ago, right? Everything is a choice. If I'm choosing to be stressed in the moment, when I take that pause and that deep breath, then I remember that it's my choice to choose to feel stressed and I could choose something else instead. Very and as nice. a reminder, our table topics are one to two minutes, which is great because it teaches you to give a response within a specific amount of time. So at one minute, you're green, a minute and a half, you're yellow, at two minutes, uh, you're at red, so you close up within 10 seconds of that time. Yes, I forgot to mention that. Thank you, Michelle. Mm -hmm. 
I also have a stress ball. So, okay. All right. Uh, and Michelle, you volunteered to go next. Is that right? Yes, I did. Please pick a number between one and nine. Eight. How do you approach problem solving and decision making in a team setting? I've been at Dell now for 20 years and half of that time was spent in learning and development where I managed trainers essentially. And one of the classes that we were delivering at the time was a problem solving and decision making course by an external company called Kettner Trago. This company taught you a series of processes logical processes to go through that that problem solving and decision making uh, decision. It is making sure that you understand the situation in full and then gathering any type of data and anything that you would need in order to make that decision. And I'll tell you, when you do follow a process such as that. There are several processes out there. It's not just Kepner Trago, but when you do follow these in the way that you're supposed to, you will find that you res resolve problems faster and you can come up with a general consensus of the whole team determining that this is the direction that we should go based on all of that information and the facts that you gathered. So I highly recommend you all looking for something like that because it does help you not only lead a group through problem solving and decision making, but will also help you in your own home life as well. I use that same process when looking to buy a house or buy a car or any other type of decision. So that is what I do with a team when I am facing a decision and trying to solve a problem. It's definitely good to have a decision-making process. And I need some more of you to use your decision-making process to opt in to do table topics right now. Uh, I see Josh, you want to go, is that right? Yep, got to. So uh, <laughs> one through eight, I'll pick a number. It's number five. All right. What strategies do you use for effective communication with remote or virtual teams? What strategies do I use for effective communication for remote or virtual teams? Well, I'm so glad you asked that, Brian, because um, I'm a unique candidate myself in that I have a hybrid work schedule, uh, given the fact that I live in the Round Rock area, if you will. So I come in, I'm a hybrid employee, and the direct coworker I have is also hybrid. Uh, we use a variety of techniques, uh, whether it's face-to-face -face collaboration. That's the main reason I still come in, even in this post-COVID world is I have the ability to go to a conference room. We do tech profile whiteboarding. We draw out customers' environments. And that's a bit challenging when you're newer to IT and you're doing it in a remote setting. So I took that initiative. Uh, I didn't want to exacerbate any of the situations with the customers by confusing their data center, making the wrong like, protocol. So uh, that's part of why, that's one of the main methods is just going back to the drawing board, literally with pen and paper or conference room. But I also use Microsoft Teams, Zoom, uh, several different chatting features. And specifically with my manager, he's a fully remote employee and he doesn't even live near a Dell campus. They shut down the Dell campus in Louisiana from what I heard. So he's fully remote forever until they open a travel budget. So he gives me, he, I'm also in contact with his phone number, call, text, any form of communication possible. And I believe I'm most effective when I utilize all those different methods, you know, if I don't get a response on Teams, then there's a flow chart. Now it's time to text. If I don't get a response via text, it's time to call. And it's all about eliminating single points of failure. And this is, you know, made possible with technology and this chat feature that you mentioned, I'm so glad you mentioned that. It's a conversation I actually had yesterday. And I think it's going to change the world. And Dell also acquired uh, a new like cloud company earlier today. I don't know if you guys saw the news. So I think there's a lot of moving parts here. And we got to have a variety of ways to effectively communicate so we don't exacerbate, exacerbate any more situations. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. I didn't hear that news. I'll have to look that up. Uh, all right, Karthik, you're next, right? All right, one through seven. One through seven. Um, how about three? All right. 
How do you stay organized and manage your time effectively in a fast paced work environment? Oh, that's a great question. So that is something that I have still been trying to learn ever since I joined Dell. What's ironic about the, this is I was back in school as well as back prior to joining to Dell, I was always uh, you know, considered to be a very well organized, very well put together person in my team. However, after joining Dell, when I joined the real corporate, a fast-paced environment, that's when I realized all of that was just uh, didn't really carry any weight. So one thing that I've been trying to learn ever since I joined Dell is um, trying to create buffer zones, right? Um, there, are, there are times when you can anticipate what's ahead and plan a perfect schedule. However, in an environment like Dell, where we are more sales-led, where we are more on the fly, and as you work in a more sales-facing environment, you tend to realize, you know, it's, it's hard to plan your day. It's hard to plan, you know, or hard to even like anticipate what's going to happen one hour ahead. So in this kind of an environment, having buffers, like blocking times every between meetings and also, you know, after work and before work and spending some time to contemplate on what you plan to achieve during that week and setting aside time for those things is going to you know, help you achieve what you want. So that, that has been a part of, of my strategy that has worked effectively at Dell. However, I must uh, you know, admit that I am still learning that skill and there is a long way ahead. Thank you. It's a learning process for us all. All right. Uh, Kasi, you said you wanted to go next, right? I think there's still time. Uh, you're on mute. One through okay, six. Okay, What? Um, six. 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 Yes. How do you maintain your professional reputation and personal brand in today's digital age? Brian, you asked a great question and a very relevant one. How do you maintain your professional brand and personal image in today's world. Now, there are a few things to it, right? I mean, we, you know, love it or hate it, right? Social media is something that you cannot avoid. I think one of the things that you want to do, even if you're interviewing or not, is to make sure that you have a clean representation of yourself in the Facebook. Let's say, Brian, you went to a happy hour yesterday. That's okay. But then if you went go out to a party on Sixth Street with friends, you don't want to put up those pictures in publicly viewable in a Facebook, right? When employers search for who Brian Thrasher is, you want an image of how you are, like wearing a nice dress shirt with the glasses, and then they have mental images. Although, you know, people may argue that uh, you don't want to make quick judgments, but fact is, you know, people make a quick impression out of it. So you want to make sure that the image that you want to convey is, um, is reflective of that. And then there are also privacy settings so that you can only share with your close circle of friends or limited friends of things that you don't want to go out to a wider public or to your professional network. So first thing, you know, make sure your social networks are all clean. Um, you set up your privacy settings and uh, you really portray who you are. The second thing is make sure your LinkedIn is up to date. You have a professional head sort. I've seen, you know, pictures with selfies. That's a strict no-no. You know, it's better to invest in a good professional headshot. It goes a long way. And then really communicate, uh, you, you don't want to repeat your whole resume there, it's boring. So make sure you know, your LinkedIn, you, know, you use keywords that are searchable. And lastly, there are also people who want to be discreet. You know, I'm in between, you know, I want to be in certain way, discreet, certain way, you know, I want to expose myself. So know who you are, let your online presence be a reflection of your personality. If you are the kind of person who is essentially wants to maintain low key, happy with what you do, you know, stay the way it is. You don't have to, you know, imitate or copy anyone just to, you know, fit in. Um, and uh, uh, yes, there is a professional photographer in certain teams. I've heard about that. Uh, so that's something, you know, I would highly encourage everyone to take advantage of it. You know, when I was in the server team, uh, we actually had a volunteer or all, also in your friend's network, they could be a professional photographer. These days, iPhones have a portrait mode, you know, ask one of your good photographer buddies to take a picture of you. So it goes a long way to maintain that. And uh, the personal brand is essentially, you know, following your core values. That's very important. That goes a long way in keeping your personal brand intact. So thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you. Sounds like it's time to update my LinkedIn profile. Uh, 
I think we'll go ahead and do Kylie's. I know we're, we gotta go fast though. So Kylie, uh, one through five, pick a number, please. Three. Three. How do you handle conflicts or disagreements within your team or department? Before you start, Morton, can you go back to blue? Okay, thanks. I handle conflicts in my team or my department by first sitting down with the individual and discussing what we are at odds with. I think it goes a long way to pull that individual aside and speak to them privately. Oftentimes it can be tempting to call them out in a public setting, but that's not the best way to handle the conflict. So pulling them aside and speaking to them privately. Um, and if that isn't an option, then sitting down with your manager and um, talking about the problem all together and working through some possible solutions. Ideally, coming to a compromise would be the best option rather than um, having to choose between um, one person's idea or the other person's idea. That was a lot of ums. <laughs> Thank you, Kylie. Well, I have learned two things from this table topics process. The first is that ChatGPT was able to make something that approximates uh, reasonable table topic questions uh, at a moment's notice. And second, people whose first names start with K are disproportionately likely to volunteer for table topics. <laughs> Four out of five of them were people whose names start with K. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much, Brian. That was a great table topics session. Uh, and it's good to learn a little bit more about everybody. It's a, I, I love hearing everybody talk about their, their different experiences and how they handle certain, certain things. So now it is time for our evaluations um, of the speech to begin. Our first evaluator, only evaluator today is Karthik that will be evaluating uh, Bianca's speech. Karthik. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. Hello, everybody. First of all, let me start off. Bianca, what an amazing speech you gave today. Having seen the prequel, the previous thing that you did uh, prior to the holidays, I can clearly tell you today's presentation was terrific. First of all, what I mean stood out to me was basically the clarity, the clarity with which you spoke and the simplicity of that whole uh, messaging. And based on what I had seen before this, right, the previous presentation, the background looked a little gaudy. Uh, should I say it was it, it was a little bit too much. Um, but today's background was very simple, easy to follow, and effectively, effectively rendered. So that was awesome. The other thing that I noticed um, that jumped out to me was basically the rapturous start that you had to the presentation, right? Got us all engaged, right? You, you asked us about the New Year resolution. Then there was a little bit talk about the ball movement. Got us all like excited. Got us all laughing. I mean, there was so much humor and so much of, you know, uh, a very natural flow that was built into this presentation. Having watched all your previous presentations, I did think your presentation today seemed very natural, very, I mean, what, what didn't look like it was scripted. So super natural, super easy, very well done, Bianca. However, I did notice a couple of things. One of which was um, in your presentation, what would have helped was uh, using fewer words and replacing words with some visuals could have, certainly help. That was just my point of view because I did think you did a great job of like using vocal variety and you literally, I, we could clearly follow everything that you were seeing. So there wasn't the need for another background, uh, you know, to have the same verb item, right? Um, that, that was just one thing that I noticed. Uh, but apart from that, if I, if there was one other thing that I would like to, you know, mention, you did mention about the New Year's resolution. I feel that was the hook that really got us engaged. I thought you were going to basically buy this message that you were delivering back to that original theme of New Year resolution. Maybe there was a little bit of disconnect, maybe something that you could work on buying back. I mean, I, 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 I'm guilty of it. I do a terrible job of closing a presentation that I'm still working on. So maybe buying the presentation or the crux of the presentation back to the um, overarching theme of the presentation would, would have been great. But nevertheless, it was such a fantastic job today. I simply enjoyed it. Thank you. 
Thank you for that evaluation, Karthik. Now I'm gonna go over to our timer and awards. Morton, will you please tell us if people what people qualified today for their timings? Thank you, this is Toastmaster. And I'll go back to regular screen there. And so one strong recommendation for any future uh, activities, make sure you keep an eye on the timer and awards. If it does not go green, it means you're not done. You keep talking. If it is on red, you want to soon st stop talking, like within 29 seconds after you see this. Um, as a result, amazing, uh, great work. Uh, Candy uh, qualified, Michelle qualified, Josh qualified, Carthy qualified. Kazi, you were two minutes and 37 seconds, seven seconds too long, did not qualify. Kylie, you were 54 seconds and you had to have be within one minute to qualify. So we had four qualified, two not qualified. Thank hey, you. Thanks, Brian. That was a good tip. I didn't even see your screen. So I'll watch out for that next time. <laughs> I've been there, believe me. Yeah. <laughs> We all have. That's one thing that I love about table topics is being mm -hmm. able to have that because yeah. there's so many times to where if you put on the spot, you want to answer quickly and get the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want people to look at you because you may not know what you're saying, you know, but being able to come up with that full answer, but yet not be drawn out for too long is really great. Because I think a lot of what we do are these spontaneous presentations where somebody may ask you, what are you working on? What do you do? Yeah. So it's, how do you explain that in a way that's, that is consumable by people? Mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, thank you very much. Please send your votes Gallery. into Morton directly. Uh, you want to go over to your Zoom and make sure that you are looking for Timer Awards Morton and giving your vote. Uh, we know who the best speaker and the best evaluator are, but so you are uh, giving your uh, feedback on the which table topics and Brian put that into the chat as well so you know who's who. And as you send that, Ava, I would love for you to be able to give us our grammarian report for the day. I heard a lot of people talking about how others were exacerbating in conversations. That was a great word, and I heard it used many times. I like how you just got it in there, too, Michelle. Right. Running a star by your name. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, I think today's meeting, we had some really great uses of the English language. Of course, there's always some things that we can work on. I do want to point out a trend I noticed today and that it's while we're thinking about a word, some of us, instead of using a filler word, we just extend that word until we come up with the next thing we're going to say. So it can sound like, and, so, but, and I noticed it was more than just one of us. I think it was about three of us that tend to do that. So just when you're thinking, you do want to not say a filler word, you want to have a pause, but try not to hold on to the word because it makes it seem a little strange. Another thing that I want to point out is the use of you know. There are a few of us, and I will mention uh, Josh and Karthik, Cassie, you know tends to be your favorite words. <laughs> And it can sometimes imply understanding when there is not understanding, which could make people feel unhappy. So just be careful about that one. But overall, and I just used but several times, I think we did a great job, just high level. Uh, Kylie, you do like, um, Morton, you like, uh, Bianca, you actually just use your transition words as filler words and but and so and you tend to like so so do I I get that one and then Michelle you actually just mainly repeated words when you were trying to think of what to say and then Brian your word is uh so all of us have words that we can work on but I don't think anything distracted from the main point I heard everybody clearly and had a great time and I do want to call out Bianca special kudo points to you for contagious, not contentious. That was a really great phrase. I love the alliteration, the use of alliteration, alliter what, whichever one it is. Now I can't remember the CC. I thought that was great. I think it's assonance actually. 
I could be wrong. I thought it was either alliteration or alliteration, but I can't even say exacerbate correctly. So there we go. Uh, stars, and then I'll finish up here. Ryan, Michelle, Josh times two. You guys use the word of the day. Thank you so much. Ooh, thank you for that grammarian report. I'll do a quick general evaluation, which just, this is, this is fun. I've not been a Toastmaster in a long time, and it's really fun to just be doing this again and, and putting myself out there for it. I enjoyed it. I think we all worked really well today. I was very happy to see all the people that were raising their hands to do the next table topic. Bianca, great usage of using your presentation uh, screen over your presentation itself. I think that was great. It was very easy to see you instead of trying to see you in a little box. That was wonderful. Ava, you picked out a lot of great things for everybody to work on as we do it. I think I've seen a whole lot of just general support of everyone and making sure that we're all looking at ways for us to grow and learn together. With that, and if you haven't already, make sure that you are sending your nomination to Morton directly for the table topic winner. And Candy, I will turn it over to you as our Madam President. Do you have any other announcements for us today before we close? I do have just a few announcements. One, for those that are members, please keep an eye out for those the email that comes out on Mondays with need to fill roles if you have not signed up for roles. If you there's a role that scares you, that's the one you probably should just jump in and sign up for because once you do it, none of them are as scary as they seem. <laughs> uh, the other thing I wanted to touch on quickly, well, our contest is complete and it was fantastic. And we have one of our two first place winners on this call today. I want to encourage everyone in our club to make an effort to attend our area conference on March 4th on Zoom 2 o'clock to support Michelle in Table Topics Woo! and Carmen Hill, who couldn't make the meeting today. She was our first place winner for international speech. And so I think that is fantastic. I would love for our club to go to the area club and support. I think Ava may or may not still be looking for volunteers to support that. In addition, Brian Thrasher is an area man area, what do you call it? Area managers, directors, yeah. something. Area director. Area director, that's it. He the boss over J25. <laughs> uh, and last I knew, he's still looking for volunteers to support their contest on February 25th, also in the afternoon on Zoom. And I will be at both of those supporting. I would love to see the club there as well. Brian, Ava, anything you want to say as those putting these clubs together for just, this contest? <laughs> uh, just that we need roles filled for all the different things, including, you know, simple things like timer and vote counter and things like that. So if you don't feel you're ready to be a judge, there's still ways you can help and, and that would be much appreciated. The only thing I'd... I was just going to ask you more information on the, the ninth. Where yep. is that in person and what, what's the uh, That's exactly what I was coming off mute to say. So that is not even uh, another club in our area. So in K-12 with us, they have their contest on February 9th, Thursday in the evening, 7 p.m. in person. I think it's at uh, the Georgetown High school, I will get the details, but it's a 7 p.m. on February 9, and they are looking for judges. I'm going as their Toastmaster of the day, and I would love to bring some of you along with me as judges. I will be there as well. So it's their club level. So it's another club in our area, and then they'll proceed from there into our area contest on the March 4th. A good opportunity if you've never seen an in-person Toastmasters meeting or an in-person contest. It could be a really great experience. You can even come and just watch. Uh, but if you'd like to judge, they do need help. Thank you both. Ava, count me in for that one. I will be there. Perfect. Never been to an in person out. either. Oh, well. Thank you very much. Now, Morton, are you ready to deliver the awards? Yes, we are. Can you share? Can you see the share screen? Yes, we can. From and for everybody, face. feel free to come off mute and get excited for winners. Woo! Woo! All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, and a first timer award all goes to 
excitement. <laughs> happy to have you on board and she participated Thank you, everyone. yes all right here comes the speaker award no surprise there great job bianco Thank you. and then evaluator again great job karthik and now for the excitement, ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your seats. As for the table topics, we have the following winner and runner-up. Thank you, thank you. Back to you, Mrs. Toastmaster. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for your involvement today. Great meeting, great interaction, participation. I've learned a lot just from watching you and, and learning myself and listening to those filler words that I do, Ava. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We'll see you all next week. Don't forget to sign up for those opportunities with Brian or Ava. Woo! -hoo! And all right, thank you, get Bianca's cat to join at the end of the meeting. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's the cat. She's, She's my stress ball. Oh. The Halloween costume. Oh my God, cat, he's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, it's been a while since I've seen it. Yeah. Bye.